Good evening and welcome to London SWF 365. Uh, I'm Chris Jones, founder of London Screenwriters Festival. We're about to enter the third and final week of the festival. Um, I was just ruminating as the titles were going that last May, we were only halfway through at this point, which just seems absolutely crazy because I know uh, everybody is is in the state of entropy. There's so much information um, coming at us, but that's what we promised, total immersion, um, immersion in screenwriting, in community, in relationships, in craft, um, energizing us and elevating our spirits. So we're having an elevating conversation in a moment with John McPhail. But before that, just a quick reminder, seven o'clock, we have Claudia Myers uh, coming in talking about redrafts. Uh, before we go to that session, I'm going to show you a trailer of her latest movie so you can get the measure of uh, who she is. And then at eight o'clock, back into the main room um, for our session uh, with Jeff Kitchen, which will be an hour and a half long. Um, Unload your brain right now for that conversation because it is going to be crammed with um, screenwriting mathematics. Um, that sounds scary, but it's actually uh, much easier and way more fun um, than it sounds. And then after uh, that, we're going to have a Zoom room with Jeff so you can get to ask him all of your questions. So that's tonight um, lined up for us. Um, in a moment, we're going to meet John um, and talk about his uh, Zomcom musical uh, with Savannah Morgan. But I thought we should kick off by watching the trailer for Anna and the Apocalypse. Let's watch it, Joe. Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Young Anna was nestled, all snug in her bed, not knowing tomorrow. She'd meet the undead. How would she survive? What this season would bring? Well, that's simple. She'd stab, she'd slash, and she'd sing. Justin Bieber's a zombie. Fantastic. Doesn't get any better than that. Okay, Savannah, can we bring you in from the green room? Let's bring you in. There you go. How are you doing, Savannah? I am so excited about this interview. I cannot even contain myself, Chris. Outstanding. John, can we bring you in? Let's bring you. There you go. John, hello. Hey, how are you talking, guys? Uh, you're going to give it away immediately where you are because of your accent. <laughs> I, I'm. I'm I'm in Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I made, a, I made a horror movie myself up in Glasgow many, many years ago. And um, that was, uh, yeah, it was amazing. Um, anyway, that's a conversation for another time. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Savannah. Have a great time. I'll see you at the top of the hour. Um, have a great conversation. See you then. Amazing. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. So uh, despite my accent, I'm actually coming to you from Glasgow as well. And uh, John here bears the distinction of being one of the very, very few people in the festival that I have actually met in real life, because uh, Chris <laughs> Jones, who you just met, has never met me despite working with me every day for nine months. So this <laughs> pandemic is very strange. So I um, I'm I just want to start out. We're going to get into the fact that you did a Christmas zombie musical. It's like you took every single genre that I could like and mushed them into one thing, which is amazing. And of course, you were the director of Anne and the Apocalypse. But I want to get into how I actually discovered you, which was your short films. So um, I want to start out with your short film, Just Say Hi, uh, which, you know, won the two different awards at the Virgin Media Shorts. and. You know, I just, I had just moved to Scotland. I joined a Facebook group of Scottish filmmakers and they were sharing your shorts and, and I just went, this is amazing. And then I wound up at the premiere of your, of your rom-com. So we will, we will get to that, but let's go ahead and watch your short.
Amazing. I just, I, I just light up every time I watch that short. So I just want to ask, I mean, you had already formed your own production company at that point when, when you made that short. So like how much, I feel like your career is something that we would all love to emulate. I mean, you have really just you know, solidly worked your way up the, and the way that we all hear is like, if you can get something made and you can get attention, but I know that you fought tooth and nail to get these things out there and, you know, it's a hard slog. So when you're coming up with this, it, maybe talk me first through, through deciding to make your own production company. I mean, how hard was that? Ah, no, it was easy. I just sort of come up with a name and then went, ah, I can uh, Google it. And that's... Nobody's ever wrote the name Worrying Drake before. Brilliant, right? I'll just, uh, what do you call that? I'll go to um, a company's house and register it. Done. Uh, <laughs> um, but, like, in, in all honesty, it was I, I was just wanting to create something that we could just sort of put everything under, like a, something um, that was sort of personal to me. Um, so uh, I created Worrying Drake Productions, and um, I'd actually I'd made a short before I'd made the company, if that made sense. So... Um, I was working, I was a camera assistant, so I, I always thought that I wanted to be a director of photography. Like, um, when I was at university and stuff, that was what I was sort of studying, was cinematography, and that was what I, what I wanted to do. So when I left uni, I went straight into working in the camera department and worked as a trainee and worked my way up. Um, and I was working on a, this must have been, so I graduated when I was 21, and I must have been about 26, 27, and I was working on a TV series up here up in Scotland called Waterloo Road, and I wasn't, I wasn't enjoying it. Like, it was people loved the people, loved working with everybody there. Um, it was, I just wasn't enjoying what I was doing anymore. You know, um, when you're a camera assistant, you kind of, you know, you put up, put some, you know, change some lenses, make sure batteries are charged, hook up some monitors, put a clapper board on. You know, it, it wasn't why I went to film school and stuff was to sort of be creative and I wasn't being creative. Um, so um, I decided I would write a, 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 like a, I'd make a short film, I'd, you know, I'd write something. And me and my mates, we'd been making, like, comedy sketches for, like, for years and putting them on YouTube. So, like, at the weekends, we would just start, we'd used to meet on a Wednesday night, we'd write some sketches, we'd all share them, we'd decide what we are going to shoot at the weekend, and we'd go out and we'd shoot on Saturday, Sunday and make them. And um, me and Tyler, who's the, the tall boy that's in um, Just Say Hi, we were just sort of sick of doing, like, set-up punchline, and we wanted to do comedy with a bit of heart and character, and we thought, let's... Well, let's let's make a short. And I'd been living while I was working on Waterloo Road. I was living in this like really horrible, horrible flat um, with a guy who I never met for three months. So, what happened was he used to work night shift in a factory, and of course I was working throughout during the day. So by the time that I'd left for work, he would come. He he would come back to the flat, go to sleep, and then by the time I'd get back, he'd be up on the way to work. So we never actually like met each other. So I used to leave him post-it notes around the flat, being like, hi, yeah, I'm John, I'm your flatmate. Like, there's beer in the fridge, wire into it. Um, it's your turn to clean the microwave, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, and he, he would write me back, and I thought, oh, this is quite, this is quite, uh, this is quite cool, this is quite sweet, you know, like, you know, communicating through, like, post-it notes. Um, 
And I thought, oh, you know, what if this was about a guy and a lassie and sort of like striking up a relationship through, you know, writing to each other with post-it notes. So I wrote this little short film called Notes um, and me and my mates, we just got together and we we shot it um, in my flat, uh, in that, that horrible flat <laughs> um, uh, over the weekend. And um, uh like it didn't cost a lot to make either. My mate worked in a, a, a facility company, so he gave camera equipment for cheap. We all had like bits of gear and stuff like that. Like the guy who was, everybody who was on it wanted to was all looking to step up and he like where you know in their career. Like you know, like the the runner was my first AD and producer. Do you know what I mean? And like, um, uh, my DOP was working as a um uh, in a facility company. You know, facility hire company. So it was everybody was always trying to find you know that next ladder up. So. So I so we just shot it over the weekend and um, I uh, got any the got any post production for it and like you know when you're making it this this is this always kind of sounds really a bit silly but I've never I've never naturally been good at anything like never like I you know for years I always had to read and read and read and read to keep up with tech with the the, the camera stuff you know and I'm never the biggest reader in the world um particularly when it's like you know about you know pixels and things like that it's not the you know the most exciting thing in the world so um uh, I, I i can i can play the guitar but i'm terrible like you know i've got no rhythm so i can't play the drums i used to get like the the cheers for turning up medal for at football you know like thanks for making up the numbers um I, I like i was never naturally just good at anything but when i shot that short like everything that i'd be you know i'd studied from film school everything i'd been doing while i've been working on sets and all the things that i'd been watching and learning it just all came into just just the right place and everything just clicked um and then when i was in post i was like this is this is actually quite a good wee short film this is this isn't bad you know um so i thought i'm gonna put this out any to film festivals so um it got picked up to its, went to its first festival and i think we shot that in the november and it went in its first festival uh, in the March, um, and uh, we get nominated for uh, like a, an award, and we picked up like the, the best Scottish film award at the festival. Picked this up up there, um, and uh, the it was a uh, it was one of those ones where I I went along to the festival, and there was a, a panel, there was a panel talk, um, with a guy called Tom Wilton, uh, Greg Hall, and the if anybody's have watching, have seen the film Host, with Rob, Sa Rob Savage's film, so Rob Savage was there with his first feature film, Strings, um, and they were all talking about um, how you're using shorts, short films as like calling cards, to sort of like, you know, you know, making these shorts, and using these to get finance for that first feature, and I thought, that's a, that's a, that's a good idea, I said, you know, and I, I think I've, you know, I've done well with this little short. I'm going to become a director. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to go and direct films. So uh, I decided what I'd do is I'd make uh, another two short films, all in the vein of comedy, but a different kind of comedy. So I'd done the romantic comedy. I'll do a dark comedy and, you know, an off the wall buddy movie, you know, just something that's all playing in the same, the, the genre that, and as I was progressing, like, the, the stories got bigger, the, the, the cast got bigger, the crew got bigger, so, and with that, like, it just became those challenges, each, each time we were heading towards the shots, and each of them were getting bigger and bigger, um, apart from Just Say Hi, we made that for a laugh, like, literally, between making the, the second shot and the third shot, um, like we didn't have anything to do, and we were like, there was a, there was a competition for a silent, like a silent film, silent film competition, and hey, I wrote that, and it didn't have the high in it, um, and then when we shot it, I put the high in it, and I like, I just loved it, and I couldn't put any of this competition, so we filed it into the Virgin Media shots, like ah, well, why not? We put it in there, and I we we won two out of the three of the awards, so um, just do things for a laugh, it works. Um, <laughs> Amazing. Um, so. Um, but yeah, so like uh, those, so those four shots were like, as I say, was were going to be what I would do is sort of put out to festivals and you know get people to sort of like get behind us and hopefully we'd be able to raise finance for that first feature. Yeah. So when you say put it out to festivals, I mean there are so many festivals out there. How how did you narrow it down? So nowadays you've got Film Freeway, which is amazing. Like it's so good, it's so easy to use. Back in the day, it was called Without a Box, and it was horrible it was horrible <laughs> it was like it was just take forever to upload like a screener and things like that it was just dead kafootery but literally what i did was i went to uh i used to go like you you start scrolling through festivals and you would just 
I would just read what the mission statement was about. Like every festival's got like, you know, like the reason, you know, this is what it's about, this is what the festival's about, and this is what we want to sort of showcase. And if we fitted into that mold, I would like make a note of it. And then, you know, um I would just start to like narrow them down, you know, like, you know, here's a few early early birds we can put in. Hey, we want to go to this festival, you know, we'll we'll fight we'll we'll budget for that. And literally when I say budgeting for that, it was just like my wages and I just go like um but 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 by doing that like and uh, like actually by actually putting my film into festival i learned you know i, I started to learn how to put your film into a festival if that makes it, it sounds silly but like nobody can teach you how to do it you can read loads online and stuff like that but literally like by putting them in and sort of like you know uh, i learned how to do you know I learned about covering letters, about sending festivals, covering letters, sending festivals, like, like you know, I, I, loved your, I loved your festival, um, you know, like, the, the short films for previous years and stuff like that, and this is why I feel like we fit right, um, and if, if I have the opportunity, I would love to attend. Now, festivals want you to do that, festivals want to hear kind of from you as the filmmaker, this is why I made the film, this is, the, you know, this is why I believe we, we fit the mould into your festival, you're taking the time to, like, understand what they're doing, and you know you're also saying I, I want to come along you know I, I, and you know film festivals want the filmmakers there they want to hear people who are passionate about their festival and who are passionate about film so like i i, I would just have a covering letter and, and then you would just change details about it you know through that way and then um and that i felt that really helped i felt that that really helped as well when i arrived and then people you know, were kind of like you know looking out for you because you know you you knew about the festival and they were quite excited to have you um, and it just made everything a lot easier as well once you got there. Um, so it's kind of like being really, really tactical about it. Um, there's no point in doing a horror film and then end on like a kids' film festival in India, which <laughs> some people yeah. do. Some people do that. Um, it's just you know it, it, the amount of times I've, I've I've spoke to like you know festival coordinators and things like that and organisers and they're like, yeah, we get like you know it's a comedy festival and we keep on getting like horror films in and they're you know, like a really serious dramas and you're like, but you know you're clearly not reading what the film festival is about and you've just wasted thirty five pound thirty five dollars whatever it is you're from, um, to put this in and you know it's not got anywhere, um, yeah. so it's like just literally reading them but like as I said, make a little spreadsheet, you know, and, and sort of say, like, you know, once you've read the mission statement and looked at what they've done previously, you'll know if your film fits there. So, like, you, you sort of give it, like, a, a, a like a, a sort of, like, tag. I used to put them in green if I was, like, right, no, this is 100%, and then sort of, like, beigey colours if I was, like, me. Um, it was literally just, you know, sitting on the internet <laughs> and, and reading. <laughs> So then, at what point did you think it was a good idea to make your own feature? You already came from these shorts, but instead of doing more shorts, you just decided to go for it and make a rom-com, a Scottish rom-com. So, yeah. shall, shall we actually, shall we, shall we see the trailer for that first before we yeah. get into where do we go from here? All right, yeah. Joe, let's, let's have the trailer. I love Mac and Cheese Day. Yeah. I know it's just pasta, with cheese grated over it, but I love pasta, and I love cheese. You're a strange boy, aren't you? You've been what? I mean, you're 20-something. 5.5. Yeah, and how many cardigans do you have? I like cardigans. What is the appeal for a 25-year-old man to live in a care home? My granddad had to move in here. I couldn't leave him here, he's my granddad. Then why don't you get back out there and make sure nobody else slips on any more piss, okay? Getting out of here. Here, we're getting out of here for a few days. If anything happens to my darling residents, you and your little friend will be held responsible. Not that English girl. You can't trust someone who makes a bad cup of tea, and her tea is the worst. You've been drinking quietly tonight. 
We go from here. <laughs> just brilliant. So I just feel that you have this talent for taking genres and kind of twisting them because not only is that a rom-com, but you decided to set a sort of more young person's rom-com in an old age home and have this adventure um, with, the, with the care home people, which just made it hit the heart at a kind of whole different level than I guess um, some sort of cynical rom-coms or you know maybe rom-coms that are written just to hit the notes uh, but it hit all the notes so talk to me about developing that script at, at what point did you have it written at what point did you go to try and crowdfund it um, yeah so um, I'd written so while I was uh, I was writing the shorts um, I'd wrote the shorts and I, you know, was happy with what we were going with. And then I was like, right, well, what's the feature? Like, you know, we were playing it. We were, and once, we, you know, the film started to hit the festivals, we started to see the ones that were like, that people were really, really sort of like, um, uh, like, you know, attaching themselves to. What ones were the most popular and what jokes were landing, what weren't working and those kind of things. So, you know, um, I realised that like the, the, the romance element was kind of like the sort of like was prevalent. And it was the thing that, you know, people seem to really enjoy from like our films um but the first so i went to go and write a, a, a another film and i did write a first draft of something else it was called babs and kathy and it was about it was basically a lethal weapon with old people um and um i realized that like the budget wise like, i was like i'll never get the finance to make this <laughs> like no way so uh, i went back to the drawing board and the other thing as well was I had all my shorts, Tyler had been in my, all my shorts, he was always my leading man, he was always the sort of like my bounce board to sort of be able to, like, have, have people to talk to. Um, and I thought, well, like he's been my strongest foot so far and I'm not kicking off with that and I really should be kicking off with that. So I went back to sort of like relook at it and I thought, well, let's go back and like look at this romantic comedy element. And then, um, uh, like, I, I've been, I was, I was really, really lucky in life and I, 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 the, I, I'd got, you know, four amazing grandparents. I'd like, they were just like, you know, um, they were just, I was, I was, they were my cheerleaders. They'd been my cheerleaders forever. And regardless, it didn't matter what I was going to do. My grandparents were always like, on you go, son, you go and do it. Um, uh, and it was sort of like, like a, little bit, a little bit of a love letter to you, like, you know, like to my grandparents as well as sort of like to people's grandparents because you get this kind of special love from them that you kind of don't get from anywhere else. Like, so with your parents, they're going to ride your ass the whole way. They're going to be like, you know, don't do this, don't do this, do this, do this, do this. And, you know, regardless if you make mistakes or anything else, and they're going to be just really hard on you or like, um, whereas your grandparents, they don't. Whatever it is you're going to do in life, whatever it is your, you know, whatever career path, whatever way you want to grow your hair, whatever way you want to dress, they don't care. You're just, you know, they just want to make sure that you're eating properly and that you know, you know, you're getting enough exercise. <laughs> you know, um, and that was kind of like where I wanted to go with, it, and that was why with the care home thing, um, and um, uh, I was in post for um, uh, Doug and Steve's Big Holy Adventure. That was like the last short when this idea came to me um i was uh and I, I i was flying out to new york to a festival for uh v for visa and uh that's when i started to write it, it was like all, like you know like not like you know properly writing it the notes you know the note stage writing it all down and getting it onto like you know a, 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 um, a bit of paper and just blocking out the story and where things would start to come and that 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 process of course goes on for months but that was like the initial sort of like seed of it and i came back from new york and pitched it to um uh, the um, one of the producers andrew lanny and tyler who I'd, they'd met me off the plane sat down for a coffee and i was like look this is what i think we should do you know you know um, what do you think and they loved it they were all for it um so that was when i started to really really develop it um and um yeah, uh, that was like, as I say, the sort of initial ideas of it and where it sort of came from. Um, and then I'm trying to think of, like I said, it's hard to sort of like put a time on this, but everything basically happened like that. It sounds weird, but so I, we'd done the shots in a year, like literally within a year, we'd, we'd got them all out. 
and um, uh, we'd made them all. So it was four films in a year, um, or four short films in a year, and we started the crowdfunding for the feature in the January. Um, so, yeah, so I'm trying to think. So, and I'd started to write it, like, uh, as soon as I'd come back from New York, like, I used to go to this library. It was like the worst library in Scotland. Um, not because of like, you know, like it was dodgy or anything like that. It just didn't have any internet. Um, like the book selection was crap. And when I say book selection, I mean the comic book selection was crap. So like there was nothing, there was no, like nothing to distract me. And, for, and as well as that, everybody, all the clientele were all like 80 plus. There was never any young people in it. So there was nobody to talk to either. In fact, I got to know some of the old people because they used to come and sit with me. Um, uh, uh, there was free parking as well, so and because it was like forty-five minute drive to this library, but it was it was just that I couldn't have any distractions. There was nothing for me to to do apart from work. Um, I could get out, go a wee walk around the block, and there was like you know a couple of coffee shops and stuff like that that were really really cheap. So um, I had nothing else to do but write. Um, and then whenever I was stuck, I used to just go outside and phone Tyler and be like, right, I've got this, uh, like, I'm here and this is what's happening. And I always feel like that's actually a really positive thing to do, um, um, which is talking out, talking things out loud, having somebody to talk things out loud to. Um, when you speak, like, there's so many things that go on in your head. And when you're a writer and you're, like, sort of, like, stuck in your room, you don't ever say anything out loud. Um, it's all in your head and you're writing it down or you're writing it down in notes. And it sometimes you come up against a problem and you can't like sort of get past it or like you know let's say writer's block but what i used to do was just phone tyler and tell him where i was at and what you know and where i'm going to and what it what it is I'm, I'm trying to figure out where it is i'm stuck and i instantly start problem solving when i start telling it when it's once i start speaking it becomes real and i don't want it to sound shit so i instantly start problem solving i start to sort of think about it and it all starts to just sort of work and click um, and then most of the time, he doesn't have to say anything. He just had to just go, aha, 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 aha. Right, right, oh no, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. Bye, 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 bye. And um, uh, that kind of, that really, really worked for me. As I said, just sort of speaking things out loud, becoming real. Um, uh, and it was just, as I say, like a, a problem solving thing. Perfect. So then you crowdfunded it. You raised ten thousand pounds if the internet is reliable in in two months, and then that's the budget that you used to film it. No, so we so it was ten grand for that. Virgin had given me five grand towards a short, but I, I managed to convince them it may put into the feature. Um, they were like, "Yeah, whatever." When you go, <laughs> bye. Um, so uh, and then. Um, of course, we're in a global recession at the time, um, where we don't know what's um, around the corner. So what I decided to do was uh, to look at finance. Start again. Shane Meadows uh, did uh, Once Upon a Time in the Midlands, and I'm sure he'd got the financing from like the Eurostar to do that. Um, so what I decided to do was uh, kind of like the same as what Shane had done, except I was trying to find somebody, you know, somebody that I could, or companies that could give me like that amount of money, um, because Creative Scotland wouldn't give me the money. I'd asked them, I didn't tick the boxes, and like, like if you go to get a mortgage, you don't tick the boxes, you don't get the, the mortgage, you don't get the, the funding. So uh, I knew I had to do it on my own. So um, I was looking about, and I was like, what industry at the moment is like still booming and you know still going okay? And I was like, construction. You know, construction doesn't stop for anybody uh, or anything. There's always refurbishment going on. There's there's building going on. There's decorating going on. Um, this is you know maybe a, a way to do it. So when we before we launched the crowdfunding campaign, I um, uh, we we sorry when we did launch the crowdfunding campaign, we we booked out a, a screen at Cineworld. Cost like two hundred and fifty quid to like book out a screen in Cineworld for like um, for like a couple hours. Um, uh, you can't charge anybody like tickets, but what you can do is just put a bucket outside and say, "Pay what you want," and you know the money will go towards like a crowdfunding campaign. Um, and uh, I'd invited along these sort of like CEOs um, and like heads of these sort of construction companies in Scotland, uh, or well in the Glasgow area, um, and sort of sent these blanket emails out, and um, four of them come back to me. Uh, who were going to come along? Uh, one guy sent his three daughters. Um, uh, one guy came along with him and his wife uh, another guy came out and the other two companies came along with their business partners 
um, we had the the uh, the crowdfunding night. You know, we launched that. That was like the, the launch of it. We showed our four shots, um, and that then got me into uh, pitch to these companies to get into the sort of like the the to get in front of the CEOs and pitch to see if you know they would be able to sort of give me some money, some sponsorship money or something. So then I went to an accountant. Because I was like, right, I don't know how to get money out of people. Like, I don't know what what the sort of approach is. So um, I went to an accountant and he told me about this scheme called the SEIS scheme. I think things have changed now as well with, with this scheme. But basically what it was is like you can get up to 50%. Sorry, if you uh, invest in a new enterprise, uh, the investor can get up to 50% of that investment back at tax time. So basically like... Um, uh, I was able to then get, uh, uh, so it then changed from me pitching to the company and to then directly to the CEOs themselves. Um, uh, three of them were up for it. Three of them yeah, gave me the finance. Uh, one company offered me a loan and I didn't want a loan um, because I didn't know if I'd be able to pay it back. Um, so so that was how I got the, rap, the last of the funding. The other parts of it was well, it was like, it was like I went down to London and shot a couple of corporates, you know, from all the years of me working in the camera department, I was a self shooter, so I was able to do like corporate videos and things. And I used to do them for like RBS and the sort of like with the RBS company, so like direct line insurance and all that kind of thing. So, um, so I went down to London, uh, shot a, a corporate, charged a fortune, and they just filed it all into the film. So, I that was how I got amazing. the amazing. And then you went and shot it in 16 days, is that right? I think so. I'm sure it was 16 days. It was 16 or 17, um, including reshoots. We don't say reshoots. It was like drone footage. Um, yeah, so over that. Um, so I... So, I was... so, sorry. So from from the point where you had the funding to the point... So I guess it's like from pre-production into production, because it was it was such a small team and, and you know, and, and it was so quick. Did you have any massive calamities that you had to then change? Did locations change on you and things that you had to do rewrites on or rewrites, you know, right before you started? How did you deal with that? Uh, like, so I love it when that happens. I love it when shit hits the fan. Like, I really, really do. It's like, it's it's when you're at your most creative, like, on set. Like, literally, you're on set and all of a sudden, like, everything that you'd planned, you'd Talk to a location and it's not how you remember or something else is different that you don't have a specific bit of kit you don't have whatever, whatever it is it's the problem i love that because it's yeah it's when you're at your most creative because you need to make a uh, you need to uh, problem solve make a decision stick with it and live with it and that's it you can't sort of like play it over in your head if i could do this differently you just have to sort of like make the decision and go on with it and and i love that because like your first ad your dop and you you just come together and you go right how the fuck do we solve this um and i love that like the adrenaline's pumping everybody's like you know like you know running about like they're on fire it's amazing uh so there was i mean there was, there was problems like that there was always problems there were always going to be problems but um just to sort of say to you as well, so from uh, us raising the crowdfunding, um, so uh, the, we launched the crowdfunding campaign in the January and we shot this in the July. One of the main, so like there was, that's how quick everything went. Um, we'd, um, like we were still, I was, I was still waiting for like money invoices to clear as we were starting shooting. <laughs> it was like, oh no. Um, I haven't got this money, um, but it was it was no bother. Like we also were shooting during the Commonwealth Games up here in Scotland, so like all our, like location, our unit moves had to be precise. We had to make sure. So we prep, 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 prep everything like an inch of its life. Um, and as I say, there was days where we'd be like we were supposed to film something uh, outside and we couldn't because the rain was pouring down so we just moved it inside somewhere you know like th those things happen and that that's as i say is just what you have to sort of like make the decisions and and move on from it um as i say i love that i'm, I'm trying to think if there's any big massive rewrites but i don't think there was i don't think that anything was sort of um uh, any sort of major issues once you get any post i always like to sort of look at things like this which is the script that you write is not the script that you film because once you're in prep, once you're working with actors, like you change dialogue, things move, you know, we can't get this location, so we need to do something else or blah, 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 blah. Um, and the film that you shot 
is not the film that you hand in after you went through post production. It's almost like three different movies. They're all because they, you know there's always the same thing that runs through it. There's specific scenes, but so much of it changes, orders change, and it's never ever going to be the exact same from like the page to like you know send it to a festival. And then you went from writing, directing, and editing, right? Because you because you edited it yourself. The, yeah, to, the feature. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't give it. To, I couldn't give it to anybody else because I I wouldn't be patient enough. That's something I've learned over the years is patience. Um, I so I, I'd want to kill somebody, and I needed to learn from my mistakes. So it's so easy when when somebody else is editing to go, oh, why don't we have that? When you know, and being like, oh, well, when it's you know, it's me that's looking at the rushes. It's me that's that's, that's putting it together. It's me that's piecing it. And I can see every mistake I made. I can make and you go right, John. The next time you're not doing that, do this, do this, do this. It, you know, it's, it's this this industry. You're continually learning. You're always going to be learning. There's not one you know project that's ever going to be the same or run the same. And sort of like you know, recognizing what you did right, getting yourself pat in the back and saying you know well done, and recognizing saying what you did wrong. Don't beat yourself up about it. You just go. That's my that's my learning lesson. That's what that's what um uh, that's why I do this. Um, I, I go through the process this way. So, and because I'd been editing for years, I say with corporates and stuff, and shooting or cutting wee sketches together, like you know, I could cut. Eh? I should cut it on final final cut seven. I think it was like binned by that point. I think everybody was on X, and I was still on seven. Like oh no, <laughs> um, oh, don't I, don't switch. <laughs> <laughs> and then so then talk me through Anna and the Apocalypse because Anna and the Apocalypse you didn't write yep. it, it was you came on to this project as a director so can you tell me sort of about you know what I, I know that it came from a short film already originally a BAFTA winning short and then they had written the screenplay and it's got quite a sort of tragic um, origin story uh, so just just tell me a bit about that project and joining joining the team. So I, I I'd got the script through um, uh, from Nason Alakaru. Uh, Nason and Nick had seen where do we go from here at Glasgow Film Festival, um, and we got such an amazing amazing screening. Like the audience there that night was just incredible. Like it was like it was a wee bit of electricity in there. I've, I've never really been in a screening like it. Um, uh, Particularly for my first film, um, and uh, I they'd been looking at horror directors, they'd been looking at musical directors, and they just hadn't found that right fit. And they thought, "Here's a wee guy that does romantic comedies. Maybe he can do a zombie musical set at Christmas." Um, <laughs> so um, and they'd asked me to come along and pitch for it, um, and just to rewind a wee bit as well. So the the script was written by Alan McDonald and Ryan McHenry. Um, Ryan wrote and directed the, the short film Zombie Musical, um, and in two thousand fifteen, uh, he lost his his battle with cancer and, and sadly passed away. Um, uh, Nason and uh, Ryan had been best friends since they were like 16. They came from the, the same wee town in Dumfries and Galloway. Um, so, and what Ryan and these sort of like his team were doing were exactly what me and my team were doing, just over, we were just over on the other side of the city. You know, they were filming here and we were filming over here. Um, so, you know, they were just making shots and all building towards that first feature. Um, so, I'm incredibly lucky to land the film and also it's just, really horrible circumstances to be able to take something on board like that, you know, from there. Um, uh, but the production team, the, 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 the composers, the, you know, Alan, the writer, they, they all just took to me like a duck to water. They just, they believed in my vision. They believed in the way that I wanted to sort of take the film and they, yeah, they got behind me a hundred percent. Nobody ever questioned any of my decisions or whatever way I wanted to take the film. You know, they, they completely trusted me and they trusted me with something that was really dear and like, you know, really personal to them. Something that, you know, that they were doing not only for them, themselves and their career, but, you know, for, for a really dear, dear friend that, as I said, they'd lost his, his battle with cancer. Um, and who'd been working on the project since, since 2009, because that's when the short film was made. So, you know, it was a, a really, really long time and a really, really long time coming. Um, and, uh, but yeah, no, that, that's how that 
re- that, that incarnation sort of came about, and that's how I'd got the job, and you know what had happened between you know over that, um, and I think that I can I can safely say that you know me and the team we're all we're all best best friends. Like uh, I, I've um, I want I really really want to watch not only because of like the script that you know landed in my lap, but also because of the people that were making it, um, and I think that a lot of that comes through with the film. You know, is that how close we were all as a team, even with the cat, the actors and stuff like that. We're all so so close, and we were all still so so close. So, um, uh, it's, you know, a lot, of, a lot of that film is you know is just made up of like a, a a mad bunch of people who just all just fell in love with each other and just wanted to go and make a really really fun zombie romantic comedy Christmas movie. <laughs> Teenage, <laughs> aye. <laughs> Absolutely, and and it does that marvelously, and it's been so exciting to watch it kind of go from strength to strength uh, as as everybody discovers it around. Because the Scottish film community has been like, "And the apocalypse," and and now you know it's going out and out, and it's so exciting to see everybody in the states and stuff picking it up and going, "This is the best thing ever!" And I'm like, "Ah, I met him!" <laughs> yes. And the Americans have been brilliant with it. They have been absolutely amazing with it. Like I can't. Um, I'd never been to like a like you know I've been to American festivals before, but I'd never been to like genre festivals before. And honestly, the audiences are just incredible. They're so mad. They just they, they get right into everything like out of their seats. Like yeah, <laughs> go on, Anna. <laughs> 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 Very nice. So I just want to come back to kind of the script because for a lot of us as writers, we're we're not going to direct our own things. We're hoping to find a director. Um, you know, what was it about the characters? Like, what can we do as writers to make something like that come across in the script? I mean, first of all, that was a musical. So that must have been, we'll get to that in a second. That must have been its own kind of set of challenges. But you know, when you read a script as a director, what is it that that draws you to the characters, or or that draws you to the script that you go, yeah, okay, I could I could make that. Well, for me, it's sincerity. There's sincerity in the characters and like an honesty behind them all, and that's what I loved about this film. Like, you know, I'm a I'm a huge zombie fan. I'm a huge like you know like horror fan. Like, and I, I grew up watching like all those sort of like John Hughes movies, and um, and you know. The musical side of it was maybe like the part where I was like, I don't really know how to do this. <laughs> but for the rest of it, like I was so on board. But again, stripping all of that away and just looking at it, and it's just about you know, it's there's this coming of age movie about you know teenagers, and regardless of everything that goes on in that movie, like you know all the crazy hijinks and you know mad scenarios, the thing that always comes back to it is it's it's it's, it's a movie about teenagers and growing up. And like the the real message behind it and the real sincerity about it, and I think that the, one of the reasons why it works so well is because it's about it's about teenagers dealing with death. Like you know, like like I, I, it's at a point. That this is the point when and and sort of like teenagers' lives when we really start to notice death. You may see stuff on the news. You may have you know like lost a pet, but then all of it, but all of a sudden like you start losing your grandparents. You know, like friends pass away. You know, like it's it's. Your parents can pass away like things where like you really would never notice it before just really starts to become real and like realizing that santa claus isn't real like and you can't ever open that door again you know it's, it's shut forever and it's a, like a um uh it's a place that as i said that that i really wanted to sort of try and explore with these kids um and what comes across for that way anyway like with, with the with the script is like you know the producers the composers you know uh, ryan's co-writer they were all these young men just sort of like dealing with loss and dealing with death and you know that's the point of it like these zombies are supposed to represent death coming into kids lives and sort of and the, when you as i say when you strip it all down but as i say it's just it's about teenagers and i love that i love the characters and as i say how sincere they were like you know they all felt like you know real kids and you know for me as a director that's the thing that i'm going right if you know it's, it's here on the page if i can nail that regardless of what else goes on in this film this is what people are always going to remember and this is what people are going to attach themselves to they're going to say i was like that or like uh, like i'm i'm john or i'm anna or like you know like i, I know somebody like that and they can project themselves on there and remember their own sort of like you know coming of age moments and sort of teenage moments and high school moments um, 
and uh, yeah, um, the uh, the as I say, the musical side of it was the part that scared me the most because South Park, bigger, longer, non cuts, my favourite musical. So <laughs> it's not like the um, the sort of like you know. It was the part I had to sort of like look up on, and to be fair, I'm not an uncul- uncultured swine anymore. Like uh, I watched Cabaret, I watched Rent, I tried to watch High School Musical, I really, really did. I got like 15 minutes in and went, "Cool, I understand, I get it, I know what goes on in this movie." But like films like West Side Story that I'd never seen, and I love West Side Story. It's like it's one of my favorites, even like now, um, and. Uh, I'd seen things like Happiness of the Kakatauris, like <laughs> the Takeshi Miki movie that's like uh, a play on Sound of Music. Um, uh, and I think zombies, tu- zombies turn up in the third act of that. Um, but uh, so that was the part that I had to sort of like really sort of look at. But going back to the original question, it was the teenagers, it was the kids. They, as I say, they felt sincere, they felt real, they felt like, you know, there was all that heart there. Um, yeah, and that's what really, really drew to me. I mean, don't get me wrong, like the spectacles there, like, you know, as soon as I read that snow, the, the seesaw hitting the snowman's head, I went, oh, I know how I'm going to shoot that. I know exactly how I'm going to shoot that. You know, <laughs> we're going to put a bit of fishing line and we'll do this and we'll build and then woof and the blood cannon will go off and it'll be amazing. Um, so, uh, like, those things excited me about it. And, you know, but the thing that I'll always go back and, I, like, I remember even saying in my pitch, it's just, it's, it's got to be about these teenagers and it's got to, you know, focus around these kids. Amazing. So I, I do want to leave some time for questions. But by, by the way, the chat is just, I'll send you some of this afterwards because everybody is loving this here. So they're like, I want to shadow you on set on any project. And I want to, you know, I want to be best friends with him. No, slow, back up. He lives slow, up here with me. Slow down, slow down. We can't understand you. <laughs> So I I do so everyone think about your questions start popping them into chat I promise I will I will try to leave um, <laughs> people are wondering how you did the snowman I will try to leave uh, time for questions uh, I I just want to get in a little bit into distribution though because the thing with with Anna and the Apocalypse is it's now it's now on Netflix it's you know it's on Amazon it's it's really getting out there properly. So how the heck did you make that happen? I don't know. I just, I just, I just made a movie and put it out and some, somebody wanted to buy it. No, um, <laughs> right, so like, you see way back before you even start shooting, there's a thing called pre-sales um, and you've, you, you can, you know, you're basically looking to bring on folk as early as possible to be able to sort of like do that. People will do a distribution. So we have distribution in the UK, you know, AMP, we're dealing with um, our international sales. Um, so that was already like ahead, you know, like to sort of do that. The main thing you want to do with your film is get out to festivals because that's where distributors are. Like literally that's where they are. Um, I mean, you can distribute yourself as well. There is self-distribution. There is a way to do that and become your own aggregator and be able to put on a, um, a Amazon and, you know, um, you can bring in, you know, the money that way yourself. And it takes a wee bit of time to sort of learn. But like what I was saying about the, um, uh, the understanding film festivals, just understanding what an aggregator is and how to put a film on a, a Amazon, if you learn how to do that, you can become your own distributor. Um, the main thing is that you want to do is that we get marketing fa- money for marketing um, to be able to get it out there and people to see it, etc. But if you go if you go out to festivals, feature films, short films have got a two year lifespan, right? Well, festivals two year lifespan. Don't put it on YouTube. You know, I know your gran wants to see it right away, and you want to show it to your mum. But you know, you can give them a, a, a link. Go over once COVID's over. Go over, sit them down, show them it. But don't put it on there because the moment you do that. You, you close yourself off to like 80% of festivals because they want to be the first people to show it. They don't want to be able to put something in a program and somebody can go into YouTube and watch it there. They want people to come to the festival and sit down and watch it. So, you know, festivals is key. Um, once you get out there, attend festivals because you get to meet people. You get, you know, like, you know, you meet other filmmakers and you meet people at the bar, but you'll meet distributors, you'll meet journalists, and this, this is a good way to be able to start to like make those inroads with journalists and distributors and you know um, and financiers and stuff like that as well. That's 
people, there's not just film fans that go to festivals, do you know what I mean? There's, uh, other festivals go, you know, coordinators go along. They all talk with each other. So, like, you usually you'll find a festival, they'll be like, oh, by the way, we screened this film and it absolutely killed. And they're like, oh, who is it by? And somebody else can pick it up and say, we got a screener from this film festival. Would, we, would you be able, to, would be able to screen it here? You know, um, it's it's the, the place to be. Um, and I know that we're all some of us are introverts. I'm not. I'll talk to anybody. Like literally, I'll talk to anybody. And um, uh, when you're at festivals, you'll meet so many like-minded people. You'll find out through there that like that somebody else has got a film that you know is is really like yours, and they've sold it to uh, you know company X. And you go uh, and do they distribute romantic comedies? And it's like yeah, that's that's the, their whole focus is you know you know distribute romantic comedies. So all of a sudden you've now got a company that you know of that's looking to buy them and you can then approach directly. Do you know what I mean? Um, a lot of things is like we we kind of like in this age of the internet, we, you know, we can type into how to distribute film and like so many like articles will come up about it and you can read them and read them till you're blue in the face. But I would 100% tell you to go to festivals, go along and I know it's a particularly with COVID and we can't, but once this is over, once and things will get back to normal, once that is, go out to festivals, sit down, go and meet people, talk to people. It's so hard, I understand that, but you've already done the hard part of asking for finance and being rejected. You've already done the hard part of asking people to come and work on your film and make it, and then to put, you put yourself out to be fest, to get to festivals. And as human beings, we, we we're terrified of rejection like I, I, we're all we're all really worried about it and we're all really insecure but but just by like having the the brass and the, you know you walk up and say hi ah my name's john and i'm a filmmaker like what are you doing here and just talk to people and all of a sudden more doors will open up um uh, like film festivals can be communities as well i'm sure you, you guys will understand that better than anything you know that it becomes a community and you meet people and you know you, you exchange ideas or exchange scripts and all of a sudden these are facebook pals and these are you know you know wishing each other a happy birthday like that's like exactly what happens at a fe like you know at festivals and particularly with your film um so yeah, so even with the distribution thing, it is hard. Read about it, continue to read about it. Like as I say, there's hundreds of articles about it. Um, uh, and it doesn't matter if you've got pre-sales before it or you, you, you're you doing the indie route, like what we did, where do we go from here? And you're just gonna, you know, power through and do it yourself. Um, because you might get to a festival, you know, halfway through your, your film's lifespan and somebody's like, oh my God, I love this and we want to take it and we want to distribute it and we want to put it out there. So I before I last question for me and then we'll go to the audience and then we always have one final question that Chris will ask. But um, where do you go from here? Everywhere. <laughs> uh, I know I've got like uh, we've got a few things in the pipeline. Um, I think I've got like so I've got like three three four films that are all in sort of like different stages. Um, I'm writing a kids film. Uh, which has been a lot of fun, and um, uh, we, me, Nathan, and uh, Roddy and Tommy, uh, who's the, the composers on uh, Anna and the Apocalypse, we've sold a TV series, um, which we're, we're really, really delighted and excited about, and you know, can't wait to get stuck in it. So, just, but see, most of it, I'm just like you guys. I'm sitting in my sitting in my office, sitting in my room, looking at that wee cursor flashing at me, mocking me. I'm exactly the same as you guys. Like, where is this going to end? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Chris, have we got any questions from the audience? Was Bill Forsyth an influence? I feel like Bill, Bill Forsyth is a massive influence. So, like, you know, just because you're, you know, being Scottish, it's like, it's, he's like the, um, the go to go to a director and I, I grew up my mum loves Bill Forsyth like uh, the sort of movies I got growing up were like Stephen King movies John Carpenter movies and Bill Forsyth movies <laughs> it's like uh, my, my mother's influence um, and I just had one about about the musical for because um no such thing as a Hollywood ending is, is one of my favorite songs from that show I, I would have screened it but I um I thought YouTube I thought the the eye of Zuckerberg would take us down so I just shared it with the group off YouTube before this but uh you know when it came to something like that how did you develop the music develop the choreography did you 
did you have choreographers and composers and everything or or did the script have like lyrics in it or so Sarah, so Sarah Swire who plays Steph she uh, she was the choreographer um so uh, there she is there she goes um <laughs> The when I got the script, I think there was three so uh, sorry, there was six songs and three of them stayed, and the rest would be sort of like moved and changed and, uh, and things like that. Um, we each song we'd sort of like wanted to break it down and sort of see what it is, and you know, you've got different moments and everything else. Um, so the the songs were all sort of, were all written um before we started sh before we started shooting in fact we'd got the cast to sing on them i wanted them singing to their own voices i didn't want them you know singing to you know uh, roddy and tommy you know doing a, a mock-up of it so it was good to be able to hear them and it felt authentic to them they sang it before they kind of put their emphasis on things um, and their voice on it and their spin on it so when it came to shooting it it was theirs like, you know, it wasn't, you know, something foreign that they just heard, like, you know, the week before or two weeks before. They'd lived with it a little bit. And we'd done them in the November and we started shooting in, like, the February. I was at the Dece November, December, we were, we were doing the, the sort of, like, the um, uh, costume fittings and rehearsals and things like that. And then we shot in the, we started shooting in the February. Um, so, yeah, so it was, so we had the songs there, the choreography. Again, we brought Sarah Swire over in the November. So... Um, she actually she had Christmas with my mum and dad, uh, me, my mum, dad, and Tyler. Uh, I, I bring all the American strays to my house. <laughs> like, on, I'm sorry, on over. I'm There's one up. one more over here. <laughs> uh, um, um, so so we were really close at that time as well. Um, hmm. uh, where we all were really really close at that time. So we're we're really nearly out of time here. So I just want to end with the one question we ask everybody: If you had one piece of advice for all the writers out here, what would it be? So we we couple of ones. There's something I usually like to touch on, which I haven't. Right. So it's it's about mental health, right? Oh, yes. I just want I just want to quickly yes. just say that to you guys, like out there, like honestly, we all feel the exact same. We all have that crippling anxiety and fear of that. You know, that people aren't going to like our stuff. Um. Also, like, see those days where you're down, like, we all get them, we all feel them, and they all suck. And you don't, you can, so there's some days where you, you don't know, understand why you're feeling low. And it might be that, you know, like, two days before that, you were writing and you were on a high and you were just like breezing through your draft. And then a couple of days later, you, you just can't get yourself out of bed like we do this as like human beings like you know those, if we go up we have to come down and it's normal and it's okay and you're allowed to feel like that you are so when you do feel like that just go and do something else go go out for a walk play the playstation put on your favorite movie whatever it is that's going to get you back to feeling you know like you again but don't worry about it honestly and i say i don't say it sounds easy we all get it and we all feel like that and Make sure you just keep writing. You know, take your you know take your time. See before you go and go. I'm going to start drafting this. Take your time. Make sure you've got all your notes. Spend two months if you want. You know, if you can, just put getting everything together, collating everything, everything together. Because once you go, you'll go. Um, the moment you get a little hiccup when you haven't sort of done that process, you've got it from beginning, middle, and end. You can start to waver a little bit. I always tell myself when I'm writing, this is the best thing since sliced bread. This is the most amazing script that nobody else can uh, tell. And it's only me that can tell this story. I do that the whole way through the first draft before I start to be negative about it. And the only way I can do that is if I can get like two weeks to just run at it. And that all comes from the prep, the months of prep before it. Um, and that way you'll get that solid first draft out. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure, John. Thank you for joining us. No, oh, my pleasure. Thank you, guys. I hope you have a lovely festival and thanks for popping in and saying hello. Absolutely. And all of our delegates are wishing you all the best with your next projects. They can't wait. They're saying that's their weekend sorted viewing weekend. So they're, they're going to go look everything up. Thank you again. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Have a lovely day. Bye. Chris, are you there? <laughs> You're muted. Thanks, John. Have I have I managed to switch my mic? Off? I'm on, aren't I? Yes. Okay. Um, so thanks, John, for uh, joining us. We uh, we're going to watch a trailer now um, for Above the Shadows that Claudia Myers made. So let's just run the trailer, and then I'll explain later. It's 
started when my mom died. Without her, I began to fade. How come nobody woke me up? Hey! Well, uh, they wouldn't get for a good night's sleep. Why are you all pretending I'm not here? But they weren't pretending. I had disappeared from sight and from memory. Eventually, you adapt. I live a pretty normal life. I have a job. This girl has a sixth sense. Thank you. I show people as they really are. Hey, why are you following those people? You can see? I'm not letting you back in. Wait. Stay away from me. I can't. You're the only person who can... Who can what? I'm invisible. Right. I need you to believe me. Get out of the street. I'm the only guy in the whole world who can see you. What am I supposed to do with that? I think we're supposed to help each other. Maybe if I can fix what I broke, things will go back to normal for both of us. So you're just gonna restart my fighting career, and then you gotta give me back with Juliana. Final date loser. We need to get you better venues, bigger fights. How are you gonna match me up with better fighters? Just get me a list. I have some news. So you're fighting Carlos Suarez. How did you pull that off? And the winner is Shane Blackwell! You looked great out there. I don't want you to be real. The shadow girl. If you're trying to make me jealous, it's worth it. Shane! What were you doing with Juliana? She's using you. Holly, wait up. I care about you, Holly, but whatever you lost, you gotta face what happened. Fantastic. So um, we're going to meet Claudia now, but we're going to go and do it in Zoom because Claudia wanted it to be as interactive as possible. So head over to London SWF link slash Zoom. I would do it right away. Close this window, start that window and head over there. Um, so we'll see you over there right away. London SWF link slash Zoom. See you there.